guys welcome to another edition of side chat with a nation the home of sports conversations on today's episode i'm going to be talking about a pertinent issue that affects most of the sporting frontiers locally and internationally and that is a mentorship not many athletes have quite had the opportunity to go through mentorship opportunities and this basically shows in some of the ways that they probably they are treating themselves or they're carrying themselves out in the football pitches. On the set today, I'm going to be joined by Ronald Okoth and Derek Ochieng Otieno, who are both coaches. They're going to be talking to us about some of the challenges that they're facing as coaches and some of the things that they probably feel need to be done to probably grow the sport through mentorship. For me, it never began here because I think uh, those are some of the things that somebody like me, myself, you know, I lacked because I never got, got an opportunity to step foot in a football academy, you know. Uh, we are called the late bloomers, you know, we were more of uh, uh, just hard work going into a club and just trying to do the tryouts and all that. While we were kids, we never got an opportunity to play in academy. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I'm passionately being involved with Emerging SAS uh, Soccer Academy or Football Academy as uh, the senior coach or the, the, the head coach of the under 13s and under 11s and also started my own academy, Arrow Sports Soccer Academy, which are partners, you know, very close partners with ESFA. So to me, it's more of just looking back at my journey and looking at the, you know, uh, the gaps, whatever I lacked, what can I do to make it better? And to me, just getting into coaching, giving that quality coaching as a coach, you know, starting my own academy, working with an academy like uh, ESFA, which is a very quality good professional academy to me it gives me an opportunity now to try and bridge that gap because whatever i never uh, there are things i never got to you know to be taught while at a young age and uh, i feel probably maybe if i went through some certain structures probably even playing in europe but you know it happened like that way so i think to me right now it's all about just trying to bridge the gap between whatever i lacked and now just trying to replicate the same to giving the next future generation if you look at uh, most academies, if you look at uh, most clubs in Europe, they're going for very young players, 17, 18. And uh, it's high time, even back here at home, we start developing, you know, uh, from the bottom going up. We need to have a bottoms up approach whereby uh, we concentrate so much on the base. For a long time, I think uh, we've concentrated so much on the top of the pyramid because we so fo we're, we're so much focused on KPL, NSL, forgetting what, where did these players come from? What, imagine if we had the proper youth structures, something that I think the Federation is really trying to improve on that and we must commend them for that, you know, uh, educating coaches, grassroots coaches, ensuring that some of these kids, they're handled by very good quality players, you know, uh, very good quality coaches. I mean, it's a very good opportunity uh, that will ensure this next future generation of players will be handled by very good qualified personnel so that they can get the quality, the quality training, the quality coaching, so that in the next few years, probably they'll be the next, you know, the future generation. But I think we're on the right, we're on the right path, we're on the right process. Uh, youth structure, very key, very important in terms of ensuring, you know, the future of the country in terms of sports and football in particular uh, continues to, to grow more and more. And I think just today's match is a good example of, of how many good talent we have at the grassroots. Coach Yote. And as a penda, holistic player, a player who is complete. Yani, who ni mjama, yani akona all aspects. Akona technical ability, yake koju, physical ability, yake koju, mental attributes, zake zikoju. Yani, ni mse, yani, who ni mtu complete. Ma coach tunataka gawa to complete. So it's advisable, eh? Umtu ya naanza kiwa chini. By the time ana develop, ana kuwa 17, 18, akona the all attributes, eh? technical, physical, tactical, una, una get up. So lazima huu mchezaji, lazima ajue kuanza kupase, eh? akiwa huko chidi. So unasikia gawa, hata wa makocho wa wako hizi mati mzaju, ukimpeleka mzaji hezi pass, like, ati anajotu kushoot, ah, hui atabaki hapo, hui hezi chukuliwa. So wanataka ga, pili ya mwenye mepitia all stages. Na kama mtu mepitia all stages, huu ni mchezaji atakuwa very complete. Utapata alipitia under 10. Unaona kina Marcus Rashford, so unacheki venye, when we rise through the ranks, that's the best way. Ju akuna utumtu utaski ati alifika 40, ati ndo the best football, ayuezi, ati ndi alianza kuza bola kiwa 40. Awa tunahita ga Sunday League footballers, si unawajua wale wanapata na Sunday wanacheza. So unapata, uyu ni mseye, mtoe ya meanza chini, amecheza under 10, amepata pata. Unajua under 10 inakua ga mostly kuja, tukimbizane, funga pale, uyu wafunge hapa, we, we enjoy. But 
akianza kuingia under 12 makocha sasa wanaanza ku develop eh. inakuwa sasa mo technique inaletwa tactical inaanza kuingia by the time anafika 15 same same alafu by the time sasa mchezaji anafika 16 sasa tunazicombine zote physical technical tactical mental yani inakuwa sasa mchezaji anaanza kuwa prepared for the next level eh, aji push by the time mchezaji anafika 18 ah this is a complete player mwenye ametoka chini amepitia through the stages amelana amejenjoy ame ame gain kila kitu mimi ningependa sana eh, federation wana tap in kwa hizo grassroots levels unapata hapa chini kuna very many teams wanafa wanaeka ka structure ka kitu yani kuna kampangilio mahali yani hata hii hi talent yote isiende waste so unajua kuna watu hata inaweza kuwa testimony eh? Eh, dikiwa form 4 nilikuwa na team by the way hata class 8 nilikuwa na team so unapata most of my players ni wenye ni walikuwa rika zangu na wenye waliacha kucheza ball ni wengi sana na walikuwa na bright future so unaona yani hakuna mali walikuwa waende so ndio maana most of them waka drop out wakaachana na ball so na believe kukiwa na the right structure mtu ya kitoka from under 10 kuna mali anaenda under 12 kuna under 14 kuna under 16 kuna over which is very good which eh, ndio sisi tunafanya na U, na UEFA Yo ndo ilikuwa part of our agreement tulisema Awa chizaji wetu wata rise through the ranks eh. Kama saitu kuna senior team Hapo kwa UEFA Inacheza regional league So unapata Most of our players wenye sayi wanacheza hapo Walianza na under 10 So tukiwa na hiyo structure Inakuwa much easier kumonita mchezaji Na pia growth ya team pia itaonekana Juu unajua Ukiwa na feeder team Kuna si unaelewa feeder team eh? Ya kukiwa na feeder team somewhere Team yako Iko bound ku make it. Mm. Yani hakuna mali tutalemeana. Tuta Itakuwa. Chese, chetwene, 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 chetwene. Juu, uko na support up and down. Na hile filosofi na tichi uko juu, maybe na tere mkoko down. Ndo hizo makademi za kina Barcelona, nini, nini. Kiangalia zinatumia. Mm. So, mi ngependa stu sana. Kupate, hata tukipata mawelwisha, sunaona. Mm. Itakuwa fiti sana. Tukipata watu wanapenda initiative. Kama hizi zetu za teams. Unaona kama sisi, this is a football team, not an academy. So unapata kuna vitu zingine sisi hatuna zenye academy zina kwa ganayo ya advantages. So na believe itakuwa fiti sana. Tukipata hata wedwisha sama hata gava. Unajua pia gava ina, ineza tap in. Saidi ya grassroot. Eh? Jumu kwa mna wanata mkiona news. Una hizi cases zinafanyika hapa inje. So ni fiti gava pia na saidi hapo mali inaweza. Itakuwa much, much better. With youth development, uh, especially working in academy, uh, the parents play a very crucial role in terms of nurturing these talents. So it's up to us as coaches to last with the parents so that we can convince them that, you know what, your kid is so good, you know. He could stand, you know, make, make a living out of football in the next few years. Because once again, remember the, the you know, the face that football has been given in this country over a long period of time. Many people don't consider sports as a career, more of like a part-time. So it's up to us now to change our parents' Uh, perspective, you know, the image in terms of looking at sports as something that, you know, business. At the end of the day, some of these kids can grow up to be professionals. And a good example is like my goalkeeper, JB. Uh, this is a keeper who's only 10, turning to 11. Uh, look at his ball mastery, the ball handling skills. Too good for his age. So this is a keeper whom, me as a coach, it's up to me now to ensure we hold his hand in the next four or five years, probably we get him the networks, through our networks, through our connections, we probably maybe move him into the emerging SAS now, the uh, under 17, under 15 national team, so, so that maybe now he can start realizing that dream. Because for us here, it's more of just creating that path for them. And also using our networks to try and push these kids into the next level, into the next phase. So it's more of just preparing them technically because especially with my age group, I'm handling, it's called the golden age. We are dealing more with their technical abilities, you know. It's not even about the results. Can they pass the ball? You know, can they hold the ball? Can they dribble? Can they pass? Can they shoot? And I think today's match, uh, ESFA, uh, four goals, UEFA Despanol, four goals, tells you that how entertaining that match was. The reality, however, is that the whole conversation about mentorship in a sport should not only be a preserve of coaches and mentorship centers. 
parents do have an integral part to play in mentorship. This is because they can identify the talents from as young as the kids are or they can provide the necessary avenue and time for the children to nurture and grow their talents. My, my, my sons, especially of course the first one, started playing soccer when he was in, in, in year one. And um, just this year, Emerging we, 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 we came for a tryout with Emerging Stars. And when I looked at the program that Emerging Stars has, it is not just training them on soccer skills, they are also giving them mentorship. And the coaches are very well trained, and, and they are people that I, I really trust with the upbringing of my child. So I really like the mentorship approach that they get when they are also uh, playing soccer. So it is fun, but it's also growth. It is, it's learning. It's it's being taught how really what life is. My sons love soccer, so they told me they want to play soccer. And as a parent, you want to give your child the opportunity to be able to excel. So this is just me playing my part in enabling my child to excel in soccer for as long as he loves it. Right now we are dreaming, and in a few years' time. The dreams probably will become life, uh, will, will become alive and my son will probably play professional soccer, which is what they want to do right now. There's a lot that has changed. We find ourselves in, a, in an environment where there is a lot of digital literacy and, and of course digi digital um, access to, to, to a lot of things digitally is now available. So going to school, yes, they will learn, and I really love that you know our children are able to go to a good school. Um, but that is not enough in in today's world, the, and the spaces where we live, we don't have fields. Yeah. So that's one motivation to get your child to enroll into an academy, where they are able to access a playing ground, for instance. You know, the lifestyle in Nairobi has really diminished that, and. My focus really is to enable my child to go out there, play, and through these academies, not only play, but learn. And if he truly wants to pursue professional football, be able to get into that line. So I'm really excited when I see my children playing soccer. I think in 10 years, definitely, my target is definitely go as I, as, as I, can, as I, as I can get. Uh, because currently I'm a CAF D qualified coach. Uh, next year I'm moving into CAF C after two seasons or so. I'm moving into CAF B after again two more seasons or so. I'm moving into you know uh, 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 UEFA, no maybe CAF CAF A, and then Pro and so forth. So to me, I think this is just the beginning. This is the beginning, and you know learning never stops. And I think for me to develop as a coach, I need to network more. I need to be more, you know, uh, more inquisitive. I need to, you know, l l do a lot of research. I need to do a lot of networking, and and let me just say a lot of learning because coaching is all about learning. And then now you execute it in the pitch. So it's all about just now perfecting my art, uh, perfecting my skill as a coach. Because in the next ten years, definitely, I won't be at I won't be at ESFA. You know, I won't probably be even handling my academy. Probably my target definitely is to go all the way to coach even up to the topest level. That is the Kenya Premier League. And I'm sure definitely I can do it. And it's all about just the commitment, the attitude, and just being ready to uh, go for all the opportunities. And actually the most important thing is uh, making the best out of every opportunity you get. So right now I'm at ESFA and I'm also handling Arrow Sports Talk Academy and I'm just making the best out of it. I'm just making sure at the end of my time at these two academies, probably I'll have left a mark and move into the next stage.